Hello, everyone. I'm Chris Potts. Welcome to Introduction to Semantics and Pragmatics, Linguist 130A slash 230A at Stanford. The purpose of this video is to provide a kind of high level overview of the course mechanics. I, I want to give you a sense for how the course will work in terms of assigned work and other requirements. And I want to provide an overview of the technologies that we'll be using. It's, of course, shaping up to be another unusual winter quarter with lots of stresses and strains on everyone. We're all very aware of that. Uh, but nonetheless, as a teaching team, we're feeling energized and excited for the quarter. The material for this class lends itself really well to online delivery, where we can use in-class polls for little experiments and supporting screencasts to reinforce core technical concepts. And there are also lots of innovative things that we can do if and when we're back in the classroom together. So on balance, we're all feeling optimistic that this can be a great quarter of semantics and pragmatics for all of us. What we're looking at now is an informal slide deck that I'm going to use all quarter to track what we do each day. You'll find it linked from the main page in our course canvas, and it might be useful to you in terms of making sure you know where we're at each day. So here's the plan for day one. Uh, this video will take us through the first four items here, and then we'll start in on the handout overview of topics, which has its own screencast. The first piece of technology that I want to show you is the course website because it functions as a kind of hub for the class, linking out into other technologies and into all the materials that we'll be using. The website has three pages, a main page, which has the stuff that you'll need on a daily basis, a syllabus page, which covers policies and requirements and so forth, and finally a page that will fill with content for the section, which will be a forum for reviewing materials in a hands-on way that should help you with the assignments and the exams and quizzes and so forth. So let's have a look at the website itself. Uh, to find it, it should suffice to search Linguist 130A in your favorite search engine, and that should take you pretty directly to the course site. This is the main page that I mentioned. Here at the top, it's got a bunch of links out into the technologies that we'll be using. Our canvas is where you'll find Zoom links for the online classes, however long those last. Uh, as well as screencasts and quizzes, and it's the place where you'll submit all the assignments and exams and so forth. Then we have a separate site called the Ed Forum for discussion. This is just because the Canvas discussion functionality is kind of cumbersome. The Ed Forum has pretty well integrated now with the, in Canvas, and the Canvas site also links to the home page, so it should be pretty easy to navigate around these sites as you conduct course business. Here's the staff address that you can use to reach the entire teaching team. That's the preferred address for communicating with us since it reaches the whole teaching team and helps to keep us all on the same page. So you can just click here to reach us. There's a bunch of other information up here about the course and further down the page is the main schedule for the class. It links out to our materials. In the left column we have a complete plan for the quarter. However, I'm very aware that we might need to change plans depending on how things go with the unusual format and the unusual circumstances. So you can think of this as just one idea that I think works pretty well, but we might make lots of adjustments as things go on. In the middle column, you have the assignments. I'll always link out to the assignments from here. The first one is up already. Uh, the first one is unusual in that you have two weeks to do it because I know the start of the quarter is often chaotic, perhaps especially so this year. After that, though, the assignments will follow a weekly cadence. They'll be distributed on Tuesday and due right at the start of class on the following Tuesday. So even if we change our plan in terms of the content, you can count on that sequence of assignments going through the quarter. The only interruption, so to speak, is a take-home midterm, which is kind of like a larger and sort of more boring assignment. It's open book and open notes, and you do it on your own time. It's meant to make sure that we're doing a kind of comprehensive review of the material that we've covered up to that point. And there's also a final exam at the very end, and it uses a similar format to the midterm. And for that, you have the option of doing a final project instead. I'll say more about that choice later on. In the rightmost column, we have links to the readings and other kinds of reference material that you'll be working with as part of the overall plan. The logic of this schedule is that things along the same row go together and should be worked on at the same time. For example, starting today, you should be watching the screencast link from here, and you should begin doing the reading. Both of those things will give you what you need to do assignment one. Students often ask whether the reading should be done before or after the associated class period, and my answer is always both. In all seriousness, the readings aren't long but they are technical, and so it will pay to read and reread them as we work through the material together in class and as you do the assigned work. 
Let's look now at the syllabus page. It covers core policies and requirements for the course, and it gives you your rights and privileges as members of the class community. 10% of your grade is attendance and participation. It's important to me that this have some credit attached to it so that it's worth your while to take it seriously. However, it's unlikely to be a traditional quarter, so we're providing a number of ways for you to satisfy the requirements. Here's the plan. There are 18 participation points in total. You earn one point for each class meeting you attend. In addition, you can earn one credit for each section you attend and a quarter of a credit for every screencast you watch from start to finish on Panopto. The screencast should all be 10 to 20 minutes long, which is why they only count for a quarter of a credit. I'm not going to be recording the class materials because I think the prepared screencasts are better ways of getting that material. They're more polished and direct, and they can bring in more material than I'm able to wrangle when lecturing live. By contrast, I'm hoping that the live lectures have their own benefits in terms of giving you a chance to interact with the teaching team and with each other. Quizzes are worth 20% of your final grade. Those are going to be conducted on Canvas, and it's open notes, open everything, but you have to do them on your own. Uh, the quizzes themselves will give you feedback on how you're doing, and the idea is that if you put in the hours with the material and put in some thought, you should be able to get 100 or very near that on all the quizzes that we give, since they're really just about reinforcing the material and giving you a little bit of an incentive to engage with the material on a regular cadence. The biggest requirement for the course is the set of assignments. Those are worth 50% of your grade. Recall that the cadence for these is that they're distributed on Tuesdays and due one week later, and you submit them on Canvas. You can review the late policy here for yourself. It's designed to get you to submit work on time, but it acknowledges the fact that there might be some cases where competing pressures in your life mean that you can't get in and on time. So we have a pretty lenient policy and it's always in your best interest to do the work, even if it's a bit late. Finally, exams and final projects. These are worth 20% of your total grade. As I said, the midterm is just like a more boring but not much longer version of a regular assignment, and you'll have a week to do it. It's open notes and so forth. There's also a final exam. Uh, however, you have a choice here. You can do the final exam, which has the same overall structure as the midterm, or you can elect to do a final project. And the full policy is as follows. Students enrolled in 230A and students taking this course for the writing and the major requirement will be required to submit a final project instead of taking the final exam. And this will involve a number of preliminary steps that will be incorporated into optional questions on assignments five, six, and seven. So people doing final projects will take a slightly different path through those assignments than people who have chosen to do the exam. All other students besides those mentioned in the policy have the choice between the final exam and a final project. Finally, at the bottom of the page here, there's some information about how grading works, and there are links to the honor code and to the OAE guidance for students with documented disabilities. In connection with that OAE guidance, I want to emphasize that if any of the materials that we distribute or any of the technologies that we use pose any kind of accessibility problem for you, please reach out to us so we can be responsive. Stanford has lots of resources, and we can make sure that these resources are accessible to you. Um, we can look for different ways of doing things, and I'm sure the whole class will benefit from our increasing accessibility in those particular ways. So please don't be shy about that. The final page of the course website is the section page, which is kind of a shell for now, but it's going to get filled with lots of exciting materials that will help reinforce the course material for you. And as you can see in the attendance and participation section of the syllabus just above, this section is one of the ways that you can fulfill the participation and attendance requirement by attending one of those sections and getting hands-on with the material and working through problems and asking questions and so forth. All right, let's go back to this high-level plan. The other piece of technology we'll use is Canvas. We're going to use that to provide Zoom links for the various kinds of meetings that we'll have and to post course videos. And you'll also use it as a place to submit work and do those quizzes that I mentioned before. So it's a kind of hub for the non-public information for the course, whereas the course website is for public things. Canvas is also a place for you to monitor your grade, so I'm going to make sure that the core grading sheet in Canvas is accumulating everything correctly so that if you want to check on, say, a bi-weekly basis, 
the grade should be updated and reflect how you're doing to that point in the course. All right, let's, let's check out the Canvas because I think the Canvas integrations have gotten pretty good. To, to get to Canvas, you just click on this link here and that should take you directly into the course site. One thing that I quite like about using Canvas is that it can provide a lot of really important information that we can't distribute publicly. So you can see that at the top here, we've linked out to the website. The discussion forum is accessible here. There's also a link to my office hours. That's a Zoom link for now. Uh, and then we have these daily planning slides that we were just looking at. Those are linked from here. So if you're not sure what we did on a given day, those slides will give you a sense for what we were up to, maybe one layer deeper than what you can see at the website. Uh, under course summary, you have all the links for each one of the meetings. And finally, the Panopto link will take you to all the course videos. And Panopto captures information on who watches the videos and for how long. And I'll be using that to tabulate attendance and participation scores. Okay, I think that's it for Canvas so that you can see over here. There's also assignments and quizzes and grades. Those are the things that you're likely to interact with most as part of the coursework. The third piece of technology that we'll be using is the Ed Forum, which is just like a discussion forum like Piazza, except I think, frankly, it has a much nicer interface for posting and creating threads and so forth. So that's why we're going to use that. Uh, you should be signed up already if you're enrolled in the course. Please write to the staff address if you're not so that we can get you signed up. If you want to find the Ed Forum for our course, you can just go to the website and click here. Uh, and this is where I hope we have lots of rich online discussions. It, it would be great, in fact, if you have questions that the whole class might benefit from hearing answers to, then instead of connecting with us by email, please do post on the discussion forum. Uh, the whole teaching team will be on the platform monitoring things so you can be sure it will get attention and it could lead to some really interesting intellectual discussion. All right, by way of wrapping up this video on course mechanics, let's return to the main page of the course website and review what's happening this week and next. Our first content lecture will be centered around the overview of topics handout, which has two screencasts attached to it, one that works through the handout and a second focused just on the topic of entailment. The associated readings are linked from here. Uh, assignment one relates to all this content and it's due in two weeks and the first quiz is also posted. And I should say that the first quiz is an unusual quiz. You have two weeks to do it whereas future quizzes will be due in a week or less. And it is kind of really excessively boring because the purpose of this quiz is just to create some incentives for you to actually read the syllabus in its entirety um, so that you know your rights and privileges. Uh, future quizzes will be focused on course content, I assure you. Okay, that wraps up my overview of course mechanics. Please do just drop us a note if you have any questions about your rights and responsibilities as a member of the course community. And I'm looking forward to a really engaging and rewarding quarter of semantics and pragmatics with you all.